compassion of the good Samaritan. And we find in this story that Jesus has been teaching, he has been healing, he has been delivering, he has been casting out demons out of various individuals. And in the midst of this, some of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those leaders of the Christian, uh, not the Christian, the Jewish community came uh, to Jesus. And one of them, and they called him a lawyer, began to ask him some questions. And it says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell on the road and was stripped off his clothes. That's not the scripture that I wanted to read right at that moment, but that's the one that popped in my face. I wanted to say that a lawyer came to Jesus. A lawyer came to Jesus and asked Jesus, what can he do to inherit eternal life? That's a good question to ask. What can I do to inherit eternal life? Every person of any sense at all should want to know what can they do to inherit eternal life. What can I do to spend time with the Father? And Jesus comes back with a question. He asked the man, what does the scripture say? And the man comes back to him and tells him uh, that the scripture as it is recorded in Deuteronomy, I believe, around the fifth chapter, says that thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And then he goes to Leviticus and says, and tell them that love thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus says, well answered. You answered well. That's what you should do. You should love everyone. But uh, in the Jewish faith during this time, they were only speaking about loving those of their own nationality, of their own race, of their own color. And that's what we are finding in America today, my brothers and sisters, that there are certain individuals, there are certain classes of people, especially those that are of the white skin, that when they say love one another, they are speaking of loving those of their own color. Mm -hmm. And that's what this young lawyer that is talking to Jesus was talking about. Yes, love those of the Jewish faith. But I'm so glad that Jesus has, has a way of getting to folks by just asking them scriptures or telling them problems. I'm sorry, parable, expounding on the parable. And the scripture says that Jesus began to tell uh, this young lawyer a parable. And that's when he says that a certain man uh, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And I asked myself, how can a person be half dead? And then I thought about some of the sickness that I have 
going through. And it reminded me that there are times in our lives yes. that we will feel half yes. dead. Yes. Amen. Yes. But yes. thank yes. God for a Savior. Yes. Amen. Yes. So what happens? What happens uh, with this guy? He is coming from Jericho to Jerusalem through the mountain trail. And through this mountain trail, uh, uh, bandits would hide in, 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 in the crevices of the rock to rob people uh, 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 when they came through. And evidently, one of the robbers or a group of robbers had knocked this man out and left him half dead. And he is laying there on the ground bleeding. And then Jesus tell, tells him that the first one that comes by was, was a priest. A priest comes by. And the priest is the one that, 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 that is most connected to God. The priest is the one that prays for people when they are in trouble, when they are sick, when they have gone astray. The priest would come back and pray for them, offer an offering for them. But the scripture says that the priest, when he came back, he walked to the other side. He didn't even get close to the man. He must have thought, Dr. Spratley, that he probably would get contaminated if he got too close to this man. He walked by on the other side, went on about his business, thinking in his mind, I got to get to church. I got to start prayer meeting. I have to have some confession. I have to pray for my brothers and sisters. And there's a sick man right there before him. How many do we walk by? How many sick folks do we yeah. walk by? How many hurting people do we walk by on the other side? How many sick people that 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 that, that the, 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 the government is walking by now trying to counsel the Obamacare, trying yeah. to make it so that poor folks and Folks that can't help themselves won't have been shown, and they are walking by so that people can lay at home and die. Oh, and these are religious folks that we are talking about here. Right, the priest. And then the next one that came by was a Levi. He was the second tier. I was preaching this at a revival or something like that. I would, I would say that he, he is a, akin to the deacon and the deaconess, the leaders of the church, the trustees, and missionaries, and ministers uh, that are not the pastor. And I already talked about the pastor, but, 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 but he did go over and look at the man and must have said to myself, mm -mm, you are sh looking bad. You are half dead. I don't have any idea how you are going to make it. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 But the scripture says that he walked away just like the priest two of the leaders of the synagogue walks away and leave the man there suffering. Amen. And then Jesus said, then a Samaritan. What did he say that for? To this young Jewish religious leader, then a Samaritan came by. The Jews had been hating the Samaritan since the 700s BC. 
that's when they began to intermingle and intermarry with the Jews and the Jews because they intermingled considered them to be unclean. But there are something about those that are considered to be less than that the Lord can work better through because they have a better understanding of the mercy and the grace of God. This Samaritan that Jesus did not walk on the other side of the street when he met the woman at the well, he went and sat and talked with her. He drunk out of the same cup that that Samaritan woman did. And when the boys, his disciples came back, they were wondering why was he talking to a Samaritan, a hated group. But the Bible here says in this in this parable that when the man from Samaria came by, he went to the man, got down off of his beast, his donkey, and began to minister to this man that were hurt there on the ground, took wine and, 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 and olive oil and began to mend his wounds. Not only that, he put him on his own horse and, 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 and carried him to the, to, to, to the hotel and put him up in a room, ministered him all night, paid for his hotel bill, gave the man some extra, and told him that if it's any more cost when I come back through, don't charge this man, but charge me, because I will pay for Forward. That's what you call compassion. Hallelujah. This Samaritan had compassion in his heart. He had feeling. His compassion caused him to feel the hurts of others. His compassion caused him to do something to help those that are in need. His compassion demonstrated that he had a relationship with Almighty God. What about you, my brothers and sisters? Do you have compassion today? Glory to the Most High God. Hallelujah. When I was a young boy, grandmama used to walk around the house singing that old, old hymn by Mahalia Jackson, that if I can help somebody, hallelujah, as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody doing wrong, no, my living shall not be in vain. No, my living shall not be in vain. No, my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I sing the song, you know my living shall not be in vain. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I'm so glad that I serve, hallelujah, a compassionate God, a God that looks beyond my fault and sees my need, 
I'm so glad that he has touched me that when I see somebody that is down and out, I don't have any problem to reach out and touch them, to help them. Uh, glory to God. And my brothers and sisters, you and I need to do the same thing, walking up and down our streets of people that are hurting, people that are downcast, people that are out in our communities. There are people that are hurting, especially in this time that we are in now. We need to reach out with compassion and help somebody as we travel along like this hallelujah Samaritan day, like Jesus day, and eventually like the disciples did. They went out and spread the gospel. Not only did they spread the gospel, we are studying it now in Acts. They bought their property and what they sold it for, bought the money and gave it to the people so they could live on. They, when somebody was hurting, they would help them out. Where has the church gotten? Where has the world gotten? can help somebody. It calls me to be a compassionate person like the Samaritan, like the disciples, but most of all, like Jesus. Notice, and I'm closing, that the scripture didn't say that the man that was hurt, that he was a good or a bad man. He was just a man that was hurt. He wasn't digging so-and-so. He wasn't trusty so-and-so. He wasn't reverend so-and-so. He was a hurt person. And I believe in this parable, Jesus wanted us to know that we are to go forth and have compassion on those that are less fortunate than we are. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for the word. Now, if there are any in our hearing audience, we ask that you search your heart, search your soul, and determine whether or not you really know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you do not know him, opportunity for you is right now that you might accept him for yourself. Man, woman, boy, or girl, if you do not know Jesus, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me. I could give you a lot of scriptures for that but it would be sufficient if you would say, Lord, save me. And at that moment, he would save you. If you have turned away from the Lord, 